morning. We're just doing a quick cat hunt, uh, see if we can find them anywhere. HP's just been unceremoniously removed from from the room. We are one. Do you think he's hiding somewhere? I Jane? think he's. A, he was in here earlier. He was. They do hide. Um, you know what he can do? He can open the cupboard doors. Really? He's, yeah, he's worked out how to hook his paw around the cupboard door, pull it open and slide in and go and sit on. There are my boxes of fabrics that are for me, the my off cuts and, you know, the ones that I can't bear to put in the scrap bag or throw away or just, you know, keep. So like half of yesterday's show, basically. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, we've <laughs> and that's what you caught us in the middle of doing. So so professional, that's us, Jane. And just generally chatting. So good morning to you. Welcome. It is, of course, our workshop Wednesday, which means it won't be me for very long. Jane's going to come in, swoop in um, and do all those sorts of things um, and show us how to do beautiful, beautiful things. Bit of fabric there. Pop that in my little scrap bag. Uh, but, of course, I have promised you every day that we are live on air that I will bring you a fabric that can be cut to your desired measurements. Well, I mean, as long as it's like a half metre increment. It's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, to that end, I had a fabric that was lurking and um, my inner hoarder didn't want to get rid of it because I have fantasies of making my children many fabulous quilts. The reality is, not really gonna happen, so I have relinquished it and it is up to you to take advantage of it. Not only have I relinquished it, but I have also put it on an amazing price because this is Liberty Fabric. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Boys and girls, if you cannot find a place in your heart for this gorgeous cloud Liberty Fabric, then quite frankly, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it, Jane? Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, it feels amazing, as you would expect from Liberty. Um, Liberty, uh, this is quilting weight cotton. So this isn't a Tana lawn, this is a Liberty quilting weight. Uh, and it's just beautiful. Imagine being snuggled up and that's the underneath of your quilt. Yeah, or a lovely border or anything really it's, it's just perfect for children's quilts isn't it it's just beautiful just beautiful um and so this is what this is yeah i've got 10 meters of it and when it's gone it's gone that's it i can't get hold of it anymore that's it from the same series i have to tell you i've been holding on to this as well because oh, i gorgeous. think this is potentially my most favourite Liberty fabric of all time, bar one. Mm. It's lovely, the colours are gorgeous. I just adore it. I've got 10 half metres of this, they are already pre-cut. Obviously a few might be in my stash. And this was simply because I couldn't bear to part with it. I'm going to make a million things for Freddie with this, obviously, with what I have left over. But look how I've managed to pick out that blue. Ah, oh, yes. So, nine, I can't believe I'm even saying this. 9.99 for a half metre of Liberty and a half metre of plain. When it's gone, it's gone. Bargain. Well, it is, given that this should be £7.80. I know. Liberty half fabric meter. is like... The cloud is also on a great price deal as well. Head to the website, www.natashamakes.com. You will find it there. This is all part of our... Well, we're, we've hit a year, almost. Um, I can't actually believe that, but we are nearly at a year, so it means that we're doing a stock take, and it means that we are finding all sorts of goodies, to the extent that, actually, we can probably fill a show with sale items now and things that just the odd kits that have been left over throughout the last year so we might have a little reminisce a little step down memory lane and um and yeah see what we can do that might be for next week there might be cake although a lot of us have decided that maybe we've eaten a bit too much cake is that a thing i don't think you can have too much cake but you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had Mine's the last. Cheese. I, I think know. I my body I weight oh, in cheese over cheese. Christmas. There is a local cheese place called Burkeswell Cheese. <gasps> oh, Jane. I can imagine. It is divine. 
if you ever see it, you can buy it in Stratford. So where we get ours from, you can get it in Stratford and it is amazing. Oh my goodness. I don't know if it's ewes milk or something like that. I think they've got sheep. I don't know. But it's for not it just it's got a slight nutty taste to mm. it. It's beautiful. That with a glass of red wine. Oh, sounds good. I sounds mean it good. would be and a bit of piccalilli. <gasps> oh, I know. I know. Which means that you can do keto and lose weight. Yeah. I mean We're that's a diet. About food again. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> fabric. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Do you know what? For someone that's dreadful at cooking, I don't have to talk a lot about food. Uh, right, 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 right. Should we say good morning? How rude. We haven't said good morning. I'm looking at snow out the window, which is also rude. Um, Emily was very excited when, when I took her to school this morning. Captain Small is allowed. She's nursery. She's allowed to go back. Um, so, yeah. It, Christmas, mummy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I shovel her. Bye then. Bye then. She went in with her little duck mask on oh, this bless. morning. And uh, her teacher said, do you want her to keep that on? I'm like, I didn't want her to put it on in the first place. <laughs> so uh, it's all her. <laughs> and off she went, sanitising her hands and wandered in. And Freddie's stuck at home. Uh, right. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Hilary. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Lynette. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Claire. Please tell Jane I finally braved the bouncing foot to do free motion quilting. It worked! Yay! Yay! I saw that. Stitch length zero. Off you go. You see, jobs are good. Uh, Jennifer Carroll, good morning. No, Jennifer and Carol. That made it sound like it was Jennifer Carroll. No, it's not Jennifer and Carol. Good morning to you. Talking of Jennifer's, I'm on her chanda tomorrow with love Jennifer Taylor. I haven't oh. seen her for ages. Can't wait. I can't give her a hug. She's pregnant. I think it's so exciting. Um, Helen says, good morning, Tasha. Hope all is well with you and your family. Well, you know, the kids are fed and dressed. All good. All good. Uh, good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Alison. Good morning, Evie. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning, she says. Possibly like that. Morning, Rona. How are you? And Jan and Alison and Becky. Good morning, everyone. She says, good morning. Morning, Tash. Jacqueline. Just putting together Jane's Kelms could quilt. Loving it. Ooh. Okay, so I have a question for you. For everyone that has done the Kelms Cook quilt, if I could get my hands on, um, you know we were talking about the Moda Grunge fabrics. Yeah. They have them in layer cakes. Oh. Could you imagine the Kelms <gasps> Cook? Yes. In, Gorgeous. In Moda Grunge. Grunge. Absolutely beautiful. Would you like layer cakes of Moda Grunge? I'm doing some shopping and ordering. It's one of my favourite things to do. Uh, if you'd like them, message. You know the jewel. Message, I'll get it. Um, consider me your personal shopper. That's a job I should have done. I kind of am. It's all good. <laughs> uh, morning, Heather. Uh, from a wet and miserable uh, South London. It's horrible everywhere. Don't worry about it. Morning, Jan. Morning, Michelle. Morning, Steph. Morning, Nicola. Morning, Helen. Morning, Grace. Morning, Fiona. Oh, she says, morning. Wanted to learn stack and whack technique. And now I have Jane to teach me. Hurrah. Thanks, team. Uh, remember, it's a lifestyle. That was Josh, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, Natasha makes Definitely it a lifestyle. Is. It's a lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> we are lifestyling it all over the place. Uh, here. It is a stack and whack. It's yes. It's also a kaleidoscope. Yes. Um... Does anybody else watch The Simpsons? Did you ever watch Simpsons? Occasionally, yeah. Did you ever see the one where it was the snake whacking day? No, I didn't. Kind of where my brain goes when we talk about stack and whack. Um, and so whack. I now have images of Bart Simpson whacking snakes. It's not that, it's that. It's far prettier. <laughs> far prettier. It's Christopher Wilson Tate, or Jonathan Wilson Tate, as I was trying to call him earlier. Yeah. I Is have... he an actor, Jonathan Wilson Tate? I'm I don't know. know. So my mum has two brothers, half-brother, I don't know, or cousins, I don't know. So anyway, and one is Jonathan and one is Christopher. So I will always get Jonathan's yeah. and Christopher's confused because I don't, we don't really know them very well because they're like a lot younger than my mum. So they weren't really... Anyway, um, yeah, so hence my confusion of Jonathan's and Christopher's. So, excuse me, I do know that it's Christopher Wilson Tate, but my brain sometimes says, 
Uh, good morning, Tasha. Hi, Ali. From a cold and snow dusted Staffs Moorland. Oh, it's always beautiful up there. So, Ali lives just down the, at the bottom of the road from where our friends used to live. Our friends lived there for over 30 years. They've just moved. And um, the very first time we went to visit them was for my dad's 40th. So, we're going back 30 years. And um, Soz dad, to give away your age there, 32 actually. And um, <laughs> it was, we drove from Sussex to. It's, it's very near a place called Winkle, which always made us giggle, um, and Leek. I mean, what a great address. Leek near Winkle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, Not far uh, from me, Leek. But abso <laughs> absolutely so snowy. We were stopping to get out to dust the snow off all the signposts to see what we'd never been there before, and it's quite remote. <laughs> where, where are we going? So that was my very first memory of where you live, Ali. Um, not that anybody else needed to know that. Good morning, ladies. I had the Liberty Cloud fabric, made a book cushion with it, and it's really pretty. Yes, it is really pretty. Maybe you need some more. Watching you while I take the Christmas decorations down. Bit sad to see them go. Might keep some twinkly lights up, though. Oh, yeah, I'm guilty of that. Every year, there's extra twinkly lights around our house that just don't quite go away. Um, there are actually some on the dresser, but I need to um, replace the batteries because I've had them on all over Christmas. They've run out. Morning. Oh, snow on the Mulvans. Do you know where we used to live? We used to be able to see all the way down to the Mulvans Hills. We could just see the tops of them. Um, not anymore. Uh, hi, Geraldine. Oh, love the Liberty. It's rude not to. Liberty is gorgeous. Um, carrot cake equals one of your five a day, says Gemma. Mm. Yes, it's got sultanas in as well. At least two. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Now, Jane made at, at um, Halloween, you made beautiful pumpkin cake. Yeah. which was very like carrot cake. Yes, it was. So I think there is potential to put to mix carrot in with the pumpkin and salt up. That's three for five a day. Yeah, yeah more or less sorted then. More or less sorted. <laughs> Great an apple over the top in you, part way there. Right, uh, f food again. <laughs> it always happens every Wednesday. <laughs> I leave here feeling really hungry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. It's, no, it's, we're not we sorry need it. at all. Part of the cake. stuff of life. Um, this is a very large fat quarter of denim. Ta -da! That's a fat quarter. Mm -hmm. It's whopping, isn't it? Tell you. Um, and I've got some very large fat quarters of Tana lawn. And do you know what? They were twelve ninety nine. They're now nine ninety nine. But when they're gone, they're gone. So do take a look on our page today, deals page, www.natashamakes.com. I love this. The mix of denim with the Tana Lawn for me is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Do you remember I made those cushions, the two-tone cushions out of it? Gorgeous, loved it. Covered buttons, beautiful. everything. It is beautiful. You, uh, oh, this is the other thing that I made out of it. Um, I made, so out of one of these, I one of these combos, I made my little eco tablet stand little bit of denim there. Um, I made the door stopper. I made a, um, what else did I make? I made a little, little pencil casey cosmetic -y bag thing. That's three items out of those. Mm. Beautiful Liberty items. Yeah. £3.33 an item. Start making gifts ready. Making gifts, rude not to. Uh, these are your Liberty options. Shall I, oh, you can't see them from there, can you? What am I doing, what am I doing? Here we go. Um, so this is option number, I mean, this is how organized I am. Option number 12, I heart that very much. Uh, that is option number 11. Can we see this all, all right? <coughs> uh, yeah, that was 11, oh, we've got a little bit of the 11 left. Um, option number 10, oh, classic. How stunning is that? That looks gorgeous with the denim, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? They all do, well, they though. All That's really the well. thing, yeah. isn't it? It's a l And again, it's mixing, though. <coughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's beautiful. A little bit of Liberty Lawn. A little, a little snip of Liberty. Oh, it's gorgeous fabric. It's okay. It's all good. Got a few of those. Oh, this one. I think this one was one I demoed in as well because there's a little snippet on the floor that <coughs> you know love it oh that was the cushion i did the cushion in that 
That's in my sitting room. Yes. Yeah, look at this one. Love that one. We sold out of quite a lot. I did bring an awful lot of these to air. An awful lot of these to air. And we've only got like a handful of each left. That's pretty colour. It's really pretty. So, I mean, you could, you could, you could do a series because look, look, looky, 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 I've got it in four different colourways. That's yeah. a quilt on its own. Well, you know, isn't it? Nice. And these are big fat quarters as well. The sizing is on the website, but these are big ones because they've come off a um, a tarn along bolt is wider than your. Yes, it's dressmaking because it's dressmaking it? width. Yeah. Amazing. They're so beautiful. So I mean, you'd have that, and then you'd have a meter of denim with it. I mean, that's a bit special, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then yeah. One of my all-time faves as well. I just love so it. So classic, isn't it? That. Just love it. Really Part nice. of me doesn't actually want you to buy them <laughs> because I'm quite happy to just this keep them. This is the danger them. when you love fabric. You're like, it's yeah, bad, I'm buying isn't it, it for other people, but actually, I don't want any of you to have it. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> it goes back to buying what you love, isn't it? That's the problem. Like, if yeah. I bought rubbish that I didn't like, be like, yeah, have it, take the lot. Um, but I'm a bit protective. But I know it's going to a good home. That's the thing. I know you're going to give it a good, loving home. Um, oh, Gemma said to me yesterday, she said, you've bought a bobbin wheel uh, winder. Why have you just bought one? Because <laughs> I want to see if it works. Because I've got 100 bobbins to wind. You know those little paper bobbins that yes, you get in your embroidery. storage thing? Yeah. And that sat in there for over a year whilst I go, they really need sorting. Really need sorting. Bobbin winder. I mean, why did I not know that these existed before? Make life easy. I'm going to try it. I'm going to report back. If it's any good, I'll let you know. If it's not, you'll never see it again. It's as simple as that. Like a tester. <laughs> um, you are a brilliant ex excuse for me to try everything. So actually, I should be thanking you. Um, this fabric, however, <laughs> you can thank me for because it's a bit special. Jane, I heart this a lot. It's beautiful. Um, I was going to do something really unimaginative with it, like a cushion panel or um, a, a teapot stand because it's nearly as pretty as my teapots. And Jen went, no, we're stacking and whacking it. I went, sounds a bit vicious. <laughs> but she's right. It should be stacked and or whacked. Look at this. This is the first time, other than Half Me to Heavens, we've bought you Christopher Wilson Tate. Am I right? I think so. Yes. Um, I don't care who you are, if you don't love this. It's classic. It's from the Regency range and it's beautiful. And the rose pinks and the soft, subtle colours and that misty blue that's in there um, is just divine. I absolutely adore this fabric. Do you know how much I adore this fabric? I bought it in three colourways, <laughs> Has to be done. Rude not to, right? That's it in the pink background. Look at that dusty, gorgeous pink. Um, that is the one that the sample is made up in. Yeah. And then also, I want to call it sand rather than beige, but it's basically beige background. It's You've more like a digestive biscuit colour, going back to food. Biscuit, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Jane. Biscuit background. So here's the thing, right? You can either buy it and uh, do your teapot stand. <laughs> no one's going to mind. Or buy it, grab yourself the kaleidoscope pattern and do a stack and whack. We're not going to know. We can't go in anyone's houses, so we're not no, going to know. We're not going to knock on your door and go. pictures of what they've made. That would us. be really nice. That would be really nice. I did have to laugh. Pam posted a photo on, um, I think it was Pam posted a photo on Facebook of um, some outrageous outfit from some very old movie. And she's like, this is 30 years old. It was set in 2021. <laughs> Apparently, this is what we should be wearing. Like, well, you know, and, and it was, was like Mad some, Max, wasn't it? Yeah, Mad Max, Mad like Max the leather, setting, yeah. the leather thing. And I'm like, OK, so really not up for Not when that. it's snowing. 
I mean, that is one excuse to not be wearing the leather combo thing. Uh, lockdown lard is yeah, another reason. Definitely. But no one would know, right? We're all in our houses. Just, uh, I mean, I wouldn't wear it on a show day, obviously, because you guys don't need to see that. Put you off your porridge. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, it's a thought. Do you remember when we did, um, we did our leather wallet show just before Father's Day last year? My yes. lovely friend Michelle... Um, who does leather work came in it. She's been asked to make things like that. Mm. And worse. <laughs> it's a whole other story. But we always, always have to ask her about the weird and wonderful things she's been made to ask out of leather. Made to, uh, asked to make out of leather is the way that sentence should have gone. Right, with each of these kits, God, rambling today. Sorry, guys. I'll crack on in a minute. You are going to get a metre and 75 centimetres, so one and three quarter metres of our very beautiful misty blue. This is one of my favourite colours. It's gorgeous. It goes so well with that fabric. Yes. Yes. Um, let me show you how well, indeed. La, 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 la. Yeah. If you've gone for the cream option, that is it. Option number one. Option number two. That one. Ta da Beautiful. Option number three, biscuit. Digestive. Beautiful. Yes. You choose. They are all there for your delectation. Basically, you could, all, you could just get that kit and make a whole load of cushions, couldn't you? Because yeah. you've got enough of that fabric yeah, to go with it. Yeah, border it and back it. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're not going to know. So, but I think that stacking and whacking is the way forward for today is my humble opinion. So I'm going to stack and whack myself over there out of Jane's way so that she can come in here. I'm going to take my beautiful Liberty stand with me. Um, I'm going to bid you all adieu because my cup of tea is waiting over there. Bye. Go on, Jane. Do your thing. Okay. Yeah, so I saw that panel. <laughs> I think uh, originally we just had the pink version and I was like, Mm. <laughs> it's a bit bigger than a half meter or can we do something else with it well, Natasha Always. was like oh, well if you have to taken away my lovely fabric and of course I try and share with you Jane you I do you're very generous well and originally I picked up the misty blue and I was like oh this works perfectly because of this beautiful in the greens on the leaves the panel itself the middle round section is the same on all three colourways. It's just the background here that's different. Hang on a minute. Does that mean that if you bought all three, you could have a whopping great one? Yes. And mix it, and mix it up. <gasps> because it's all the panel, the actual circular, 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 <laughs> circular. Boom. That round bit. That round bit in the middle <laughs> is, um, is the same on all of them. The colourway, the pattern is exactly the same. They're all the same. There's eight circles in each panel. And that's what led me to think, Ooh, we could stack and whack this. That's a because thing. the whole point of stack and whack is, now, when I learnt this technique, my teacher said, it's a great way to get rid of your ugly fabric. And I was like, <gasps> ugly what? fabric? I don't have ugly There's fabric. There's no such thing as ugly fabric. What she actually meant was, if you've got a big, bold print, that yeah. you're not quite sure what you're going to do with, you can use this technique. So okay. it doesn't have to be done. And if you've got a panel, um, I think, you know, a while ago, 30 years ago, there was a big um, fashion for um, panels, like cushion panels that you just, oh, right. yeah. like pre-printed that you just quilted. Okay. Lots of different designs. And if you've got, if you've got one of those, or eight of those, it was a good way of making Stacking it into some, something else. Yeah. Because the whole point is you put, you layer up your fabric and you cut a triangle out of all eight layers. So you're getting eight of the same part of the fabric. Oh. So when you twist it round, this is where the kaleidoscope effect comes I in. I see. So it makes a completely different effect. Nice. From your fabric so you have a fabric that you're like mm, i'm not really sure about this why did i buy it well, i like the colors then you stack and whack it 
and you get this kaleidoscope effect and you get a completely different look from your fabric. Amazing. And this is what led me to look at this. Now, Not when you didn't like it, but just no, because, because it just... I thought, oh, there's eight the same. That would work. And it's a nice technique to show because it's yeah. a it's not complicated. The hardest thing with it is that you might be working on a bit of a bias, so you just have to be careful. But your best press, your spray stodge, get your, your flatter, what press out. Ever you need works your mum really says, well. Um, no more food talk, please. Yeah. Mum and I <laughs> Mum didn't, but I did. I got on her scales and I was like <laughs> <laughs> You're only ever meant to uh, weigh yourself on your same same scales. Yeah, they're well, obviously calibrated wrong. I don't have any at home. I deliberately don't well, they weigh are my the correct <laughs> scales then, aren't they? So I'm pretty much the sort of person that's like, it's not about what you weigh, it's how you feel. And I was feeling a little bit lumpy. Got an extra bit here that I've not had for a long time, seeing as my boys are 24 and 26. Um, so... Yeah. Um, in other news, Geraldine says that she likes my top. Looks very cosy. Where did I get it? It's my Christmas chop. It's lovely. Yeah, it is lovely. Um, I want to say it's from Super Dry. I got it for Christmas. Uh, the boys bought it for me for Christmas. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Um, but it's super long, so it keeps my bottom warm on dog walks. That was Perfect. the plan. Um, That's exactly what you need. Yeah. Uh, Myra just woke up to cheese. It's, oh, no, we're not allowed to talk about food anymore. <laughs> Cold and frosty, uh, says Alison, you know, all over the place. Morning, Lo. Um, <laughs> Laurie says, morning again. Was Emily mad at me? No, she really wasn't. Captain Small adores school. In fact, the only time that Emily has absolute meltdowns is when we have to leave Freddie at school and take her home on the days that she's not allowed to go in. Yeah. She loves it. And actually, the older kids will say that Emily is the boss of school. She's the Honestly, boss of everywhere. That's what the parents tell me. She's the boss of everywhere. Just Our children say, that. Emily's the boss of school. Uh, Ginny says, it's pretty in Pitt and Weem. I think it's always pretty. I think, I think yeah, it could do whatever a, in Pitt and Weem. It looks really beautiful. It's just a pretty place, isn't it? Cold in Darlington, said Jane. And frosty in Liverpool. We should maybe do a, a quilt of the world, or of, the, of, the, of the UK. And have weather map well <laughs> do you remember the floating one they used to have on this morning yes. i could be michael fish <laughs> we could have fun. velcro we could have velcro weather bits yeah and we could do that of a yeah. morning this morning it is yeah i mean nice. that would while away a, a minute or two it would, of entertainment it would. Definitely. Take us, oh, a bit like because we've got a christmas panel to bring you in our sale show which is phenomenal. It's a Christmas tree panel with little decorations. And we were saying you could Velcro on the decoration so that the kids could decorate it. Yeah. Because I don't want them near my Christmas tree again. It upsets <laughs> me. My OCD can't cope. We're terrible. <laughs> we're just like, don't touch it. Don't, <laughs> don't touch it. I spent hours making sure that's all balanced. <laughs> and then Freddie went and put a McDonald's Happy Meal toy on it as a decoration. I'm like, nope. And then Captain Small removed everything from her height downwards. And I was like, right. They're having a velcro. And then Christmas if you've got cats as well, you're just like what, lose, fighting a losing battle. How many you? days did we find Theo in the Christmas oh, tree? Oh gosh! And then there was one lovely famous day where the cleaner left saying, "So I think I think you've got a mouse in your <laughs> Christmas tree." Theo's just chased it up there. I'm like, "No, come on!" And she just left saying, "Happy Christmas," <laughs> and went. I'm like, "Oh come on!" I don't think anybody else is. Life is like this. Um, sorry, Jane, you were okay. good stuff. Shall we make this? Quick? Yeah. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be far too much fun. Right. So what we need to do is we need to make panel pieces the same size to stack up. So with this panel, in between the two circular bits, I like to call them plates because they remind me of China plates. Yes. Um, it's one and three quarters. So I measured seven-eighths of an inch between off the edge of the one plate so that I could cut that down and made sure that I got seven eighths of an inch either side which just happens to make it just a bit bigger than 10 inches square which is the minimum size you need 10 inches because we're going to cut them into five inch squares and then we're going to cut the squares in half so I'm just going to show you 
the most preparation is the, is the most part of this technique. The prime more proper proper no prime proper preparation to prevents prime, poor proper, performance. Yeah, that one. Yeah. The more you take your time with the preparation, the better your block will go together. So I'm just seven eighths of an inch either side of this. If you've got a fabric, I'm not going to use the word ugly, but if you've got a large print fabric, you think, oh, I could make something with this technique. Just make sure that you've got at least, look at the pattern repeat. You don't want a pattern repeat more than about 12 inches, really, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of wastage. Okay. But you want eight repeats of your fabric to stack up. Okay. And okay. if you're using, if you're using a pattern print, yeah. You don't have to cut it in a block like I'm going to do. You can cut random squares in different places. So you can oh, look at a okay. bit of print and think, oh, that might be interesting. Okay. So could you do four of one pattern, four of the other, and do it that way? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Game changer. You need to have eight triangles. Okay. So you do need to have eight layers to cut through. Okay. So this is the other thing I'll say to you. Put a brand new blade in your rotary cutter because you're going to be cutting through eight layers of fabric. You know those um, super duper... Your titanium ones. Yes. They would do it, wouldn't they? They would. I didn't realise that not only were they meant to last longer, but they were meant to be easier to cut through stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, they will be. Oh, we need a bit of that, don't we? Now, I've got the salvage edge on this side. I'm not going to worry about it, but what I am going to do is I'm going to make sure I cut through the middle equally on these two plates, and then I'll have a fairly equal size square okay. to start with. Okay. Um, now, Jacqueline says, uh, whack-a-mole. Yes! <laughs> I used to love whack-a-mole. Brilliant yeah. game. Yeah, it's... we used to have whack a racks at our, um, you know, summer fair things. That yes! Whack the rat that used to go down the drain. It was a stuffed stock, sock, and you'd go down the drain pipe and you'd have to try and have to whack it before it got to the end. Amazing. And win a prize. Amazing. Yeah, they, they have a, a whack-a-mole-y type thing, I think, at um, St Nick's Park in Warwick. They have sort of an all year open little fairgroundy place, yeah, um, which is always worth a quick quid to whack a mole. So, on this one, because it's a wider gap between the two, I'm going to call them plates, it's easier. Yeah. Um, it's just I think three inches, so I'm just cutting it at one and a half. Do it. I know that they're going to be you know, they're bigger than 10 inch squares, but that's fine for, at this point. So, I'm going to place them. You will have eight. I've only got four because I've done some preparation with the, the panel. So you'll layer them all up on top of each other. Don't worry that you've got some that are a bit bigger than others at this point. As long what as are you've you lining got, up then? I am just lining them up at the moment because now this is where we're going to make sure that they are properly lined up. Oh, okay. We're going to sew through the eight layers. What? Um, by hand. Da, oh, da, okay. Da. Crikey, you had me worried there. Uh -huh. No, no, you don't use the machine just yet. I'm just mm. going to pull Ooh. some thread off here. Not with pinking shears. There we go, the scissors. Ah! That wasn't very well done, was it? Myra says she hasn't had the washing out for weeks. Rained up to Christmas. Since Christmas, washing is so hard and stiff with ice, it could walk in by itself. Uh, you see, I think you're brave. I stopped putting washing out on the line when we lived in Cornwall because I'd put it out when it was sunny. 20 minutes later, you'd have thunderstorms and high winds and I'd have to be collecting it off the moors again. Um, oh, Penny's trying to sort out technology. I can't help. Sorry. Um, Margaret says, arrange pineapple slices with cherries in the middles um, in the bottom of a dish for pineapple upside down carrot and pumpkin cake with raisins. Lovely. Yes. That's the lot. That's our five, right? We're done. So I've tried Ooh. with my layers to put them so that the fabric, the design, is all in the same orientation, she says. All right, she has on that one. So I've pretty much got them on top of each other in the same direction with the same like the tulip there is on top of the tulip, is on top of the tulip, is on top of the tulip. So once I've got them, and if you want to, you know, be doubly sure, cut your squares into your 10 inches, making sure that you've got the same amount of distance between each side of your plate. 
So you're going to pick a point in your design. Doesn't matter where you pick it, but make sure that it's one that you're going to be able to easily recognise. So like on this one, if I go, can we go close up? Oh, always, Jane. So on here, I'm going to place my needle through the middle of that. There's like a little dot in the centre of that flower there. So find a common place and yeah. go through it. Okay. And so I'll go through that layer, she yeah. says, after a needle's just come unthreaded. I love live television. Oh, well, in the meantime, there's a lot of love for bobbin winders. Who knew? John Cole Morgan loves his. Myra loves hers. Uh, I think Kirsty if you do a lot hers. of embroidery, they're perfect, aren't they? Because they keep your threads all, you know, make it easier to wind your threads onto bobbins and, and things. So it's gone through that one on there and through. So you're going to go through all eight layers. Now I've knotted my thread at the bottom. Okay. And we're going to go. Oops. It's a bit fiddly, this bit, but it's, as I say, this part... This is the, your prior and proper preparation for making yeah, poor the more you do this, the more you're going to get out of your design, the easier it's going to go to get together. Okay, so... <gasps> oh, Alison has just placed her first order for the cloud fabric. Guess who it's for? Ooh. She's going to be making something lovely for her grandson born just three days ago. Oh, how lovely. Lockdown baby. He's called Theodore Samuel. Oh, what a lovely name. Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? Really so gorgeous. I've just pulled that through and the knot obviously wasn't big enough, so Obst. it's pulled through one of the panels. So we'll just pull that to the top and we'll just go again. Now, <laughs> Elizabeth's only just realised lockdown lard is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma says the struggle is real. It's true. It's true. And the thing is, um, <laughs> Becky's added. We've had lockdown we've had... lard and then we've had Christmas on top as well, haven't we? So well, it's like double. Uh, she's she's added into the mixed menopause mound. Not heard of that one. Oh, That's right. brilliant. Now I'm just making a knot as close as I can to the to the top of that fabric because you want it to hardly move. Okay. And yes, there is a pattern. They are on the site. Um, there's a pattern. There should be a download or a paper version, whichever you like. And all of these will be on. If you just if you just put in, how have you spelt kaleidoscope, Jane? Um, with great difficulty. K a l e i s c o p e. She says confidently. Stack and whack would have been easier to spell. It would have been. <laughs> Thank Just goodness saying. for spell check. Yeah. Uh, John loves a stack and work. I mean, who doesn't, right? It is a really lovely way of doing a quilt. So I'm just, just going through the panel, finding points that I can see on all... I've lost a panel there. I'm talking of losing of things. It has been noted that you're wearing your spec mate today. Yes. And that it matches your and top. And it matches my I top. Love it. How coordinated is that? Not planned, but it worked. Do I like it. I'm not going to lie. I love a daisy. So there you go. It's going to be, you know. I put my top through the wash with it still on. Oh, gosh. Stayed on. Yeah. The magnets are really strong. They are. And it's yeah. like, you don't even have to worry, do you, about it being in the right place because you just fumble with it put it there and it goes clink and it's found it it's brilliant uh john says that stack and whack does work well though with ugly fabric there's no such thing as ugly fabric even as you say no ugly fabric we, we don't do ugly fabric here john <laughs> they'd have to have found it elsewhere john i, I refuse ugly fabric i was just thinking about because i was looking at some of the cave fabric and i was thinking well, this would look really good with stack and whack right because you would create some amazing kaleidoscopes with it oh no hang on a minute no okay so yeah Gemma I've forgotten about that fabric Gemma she said I would argue this Natasha McCarty showed me some fabric recently that could give you nightmares yes but I didn't choose it and I refused to bring it to wear and I'm pretty sure my supplier sent it as a joke and I managed to offload it on the school this morning they're going to I don't know wipe their feet on it or something it was disgusting um so yeah that's gone and the thing is 
you know, we've all got different tastes and some of us like different things. Jane, you didn't see it. No one would like it. No. They put human face on animals and made it bite green. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I said to my supplier, you need to pick it up. And he said, so I mean, it's been in the warehouse for like a year. And uh, he's like, yeah, I just, just thought I'd see if you like it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I hate it. You're Stuff taking it back. Nightmares. And of course, then lockdown happened. So we never collected it. No. So I, I, said, I, said, I reminded them of it just the other day. And they're like, yeah, just, just maybe get rid of that one. It's like, yeah. Um, Linda has just finished eating her way through a triple chocolate panettone the size of a small bungalow. I mean, that's okay. I find that when it gets a bit dry, if you add some ice cream and melt it a little bit. Yeah, or a nice bit of custard. <laughs> Stop yeah, talking about food. Quite good. <laughs> the latest thing that my husband has found is, uh, you know that low, you, oh, what's it called? It's some kind of low calorie ice cream type thing. Oh, is thing it Halo? Is it Halo? Uh, or Jack's or something like that. Something yeah. like that, anyway. Um, but he makes up for that by melting Biscoff sort of... <laughs> Biscoff spread melts it in the microwave so it becomes like a creamy sauce and pours it over the top. It's a bit like, do you remember those mountain chocolate pot things? That, oh yeah. You know, and you used to, and you used to um, pour it over your ice cream and it would go hard. Do you remember it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a bit like that. Ice magic, it was called, wasn't it? Something Ice like magic, that. Wasn't it? We were only allowed it at birthdays. Yeah, it was. Yeah, one yeah. of those things that was a real. It was treat. shaped like a mountain, wasn't it? And yes. it had it sort of. It had like one. It had like a um, snow top mountain. Yes. Top. You pulled yeah. it off. Yeah. Um, they don't make stuff like that anymore. I don't know why. Yeah, John. The, the spec make is in the deal section. Um, I can't imagine that it was anything other than some sort of chemical storm in there. Yeah, there's probably some sort of <laughs> sugar in there that you weren't supposed to eat anymore or something. <sighs> so I'm, I'm only going to do a few of these just to show you the technique. But as I say, the more you can do at picking out the point on your pattern and going through all the layers, and as I say, you'll be going through eight layers... This is the thing that takes the time, and I can't stress enough, the more points you sew through, the better it is for your end result. Okay. Because well, as I say, you're going to sew through eight layers of fab um, cut through eight layers of fabric. So you don't want it to move, really. Now, eight layers is quite a lot of fabric to cut through in one go so it will move slightly so the least amount of movement you can get in it the better okay. now I am doing like a French knot at the top and pulling it through if you find that difficult go up and go down oh, and on, tie it can you do that again because yeah. you, you went on the shop so I've done like a French knot and pulled Show it off. right through <laughs> but if if you find French knots difficult yes <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said show off. <laughs> so if you if you find that difficult, what you can do, and this you might find this technique easier. Right. You can go up up the point that you've chosen, go through all the layers. Just making sure that you get the right point on each bit. I think that's gone. Yeah, that's right. And through Ooh. that one. The rose pink option sold out, guys. Well done. Wow. So go through. Oh, pulled it through now. Sorry, this is not good. No, it's all right. Um, Lisa had a mouse in their tree as well. If you see, I feel less bad when you tell me stuff like that. Did you see on the Facebook the lady that had a koala bear in hers? I mean, it was Australia, obviously. I mean, that's up in the ante, isn't it? But Lisa. And they one. couldn't get. They couldn't get it to come out of the oh, tree. No. They had to get, you know, specialists because koalas have got really sharp Everything's claws and they can be a bit nasty, can't they? So they, they had to be. get... No, they look so gorgeous. I said this to Glenn the other day. We were watching something and I... Oh, it was about the, the da new David Attenborough thing and they were showing the bears. And I was like, why is it the most vicious animals look the loveliest? Like you want to go and... You look at a lion and yeah. I don't, maybe it's just me. I've got this terrible urge that I want to go and bury my face in its mane. Yeah, maybe don't try that. No. no. And the same with polar bears. They like, you want to hug them. And grizzly bears, obviously not snakes and things like that. But yeah. 
those kind of creatures are the ones that you really want to hug. Would bite your head yes, off. Yes, as soon as yes. you got anywhere near them. Yes. So what I've done is I've gone up and then I'm going back <laughs> through the same place <laughs> so that I'm taking the thread to the back of the fabric and then you can pull it really tight and you can just do an ordinary... Or an ordinary knot. Tie it knot. Yeah. Don't worry about these bits of thread because they'll disappear when you cut it and you'll unpick it. You'll just slip your unpicker through. But what you're doing is you're anchoring all the layers of your fabric together so it doesn't move. Okay. Okay. And then, now with this one, because I wanted to keep the circle, yes. I wanted to keep that circular yes. effect, I then trimmed all the squares to 10 inches. Okay. Apparently John's asked a question about sizings in a minute. We'll get to that. But anyway, yeah. Lisa's mouse ate all of their Lindor chocolate Santas. Rude. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. The feeling of a new blade through fabric is heavenly. Yes. yes. Especially when you have the titanium ones. Um, yes, definitely. Right. Where is the question? There's a question apparently about size. I don't know. What are you asking, John? What, what, what? Um, so I think it is the plate itself is just not just over it's eight and seven eighths so i think i said half an inch when i was working it out half an inch just over half an inch jane do you happen to know the top of your head three eighths maybe big the one is behind you um no i don't because you know john it's Cole morgan's about four <laughs> <laughs> it's a i think it's it's on the pattern. I've written it on the pattern. I don't want to say. I think it's about 36 by 52 or something like that. 38 by 52, possibly. So I'm, I'm going to ask Gemma to have a look at the, at the pattern very quickly and let us know. And yeah. then, John, we can let you know. And um... So I think I did... If you've got a square ruler, use your square ruler. Place it in the middle and work your way around you want 10 inch squares because you need to cut five inch five inch um, squares and then cut them into half square triangles and because I wanted to keep the circle that's why I did um, what I did <laughs> why you did why did you do what you I do what I did yeah um, it's okay because Becky makes her panettone into bread and butter pudding, so no calories there. Then. What are you lot like, honestly? You're just, you know, you're tempting us all the time. You're tempting us. Um, Karen oh, says that, that a bit more this bit. year will be the year to try and learn a new skill. This quilt looks amazing. You see, there you go. And John loves a huge quilt. Now, you see, John, you can love a huge quilt because you've got a whizzy whizzy machine to I make quilting say, you can easier. Quilt it easy. Yeah. That's three quarters. Um, and Anne's Lucky Dip Long Quarters bundle has just arrived. She said, wow, some amazing fabrics. And they have brightened up her day. Thank That's you. What well, that's what it's all about. about. Absolute pleasure. Could you use a glue pen, Jane, to stick the layers together? You could. I don't know whether it would be accurate enough. Um. I think because of the thinness of thread and going through it holds it accurately yeah. whereas a glue pen you might not be dotting it in exactly the same place each time I don't know try it okay try it and see so I have cut these this now in a 10 inch square now I've gone a little bit off on the side of my measurements here talking and doing at the same time take your time as I say go through as many points as you can yeah just because it will give you that accuracy and it will hold the layers together. Um, I've cut it into a 10 inch square because I'm now going to cut it in half into quarters and then I'm going to cut through both diagonals. Okay, before you do that, Jane, there's a little, there's, um, next to my tea cosy that I did on Monday, there's a, um, a yarn ball of um, tape measure. Could you just give that a quick, quick measure for me, please? Because John's missed out on the, on the rose pink. Whilst he was waiting for us to measure, soz John. Oh dear. Oh, there you go, 34 by 50 inches. That's yeah, it. Yeah, 30. Good. We found out. Three ish. Um, yeah. Doesn't quite go. Oh, um, could you use the micro stitch tool? Um, I don't, only if it's very, because 
I've got this thing about micro stitch because some people use it to hold their layers together when they're quilting. It moves. Mm. There's a gap. You really and can't stress this enough. You really want to pull the threads as tight as they'll go so there's no movement of the fabric. It's th that's the most important bit really. Because I came unstuck on mine and um, it makes it difficult to join the triangles together if you haven't gone through all the layers. Okay. It's all about this taking your time at this point and the precision at this point makes it all go together be better. I can't stress that enough really. If you've got a large print fabric, I'm not saying ugly, if you've got a large print fabric, you can cut five inch squares at random places. Right. So if you've got the five inch square ruler. Yeah. The perfect can, five. Perfect five. Love my perfect five. You can place that on your print at random plot points. Because you've got these eight layers, you're going to cut yeah. them into triangles and the eight triangles make the block. Nice. Oh, this is very exciting. Very so exciting. I'm cutting this in half mm -hmm. at five inches mm -hmm. because I've made a, a 10 inch square. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting it in half. I'm cutting it through the other way. Yeah, you see, you do me, you just step to the side. Yeah, sort of I always cut away in. from myself. Yeah. Obviously, the rotating cutting mat makes life a lot easier, and I should have picked that up. I put it down here, ready to use. <laughs> oh, I've got it. rotating cutting mats back in stock. Yay! They came yesterday. Um, Myra says, okay, got that. Listen to Jane. Right thread. Right threads. Threads, 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 threads. threads. I think. Threads, people, threads. Try it with your micro stitch, but I do think you might find that there's movement of fabric between, yeah. even with eight layers. And I don't care how hideous your fabric is, you still don't want to waste it. No, you don't, because you're going Unless to create, you know, you're going to take time to create a quilt. Yeah. You know, and, and you want, the worst thing you do, and when I did this at my, at the class, the first time I did it, my quilt wouldn't, my blocks wouldn't go together because I'd rushed oh, this stage. Dang. So it's actually half made in a bag because oh, I was yeah. just like, can't do in this, can't do it, can't do the technique. And look at you now. And this is what happens. It, it's all about your preparation. And yeah, it's monotonous and it's a bit boring and blah, blah, blah. You could do this point sitting in front of the television watching your favourite soap or your favourite programme. It's one of those things that the preparation is the key. Right. So Inga and I have a theory um, because I think that her partner and my husband's choice of movies are quite similar. And when it's their turn to choose, that's when projects like this come out. Yeah. Um, Inga used to call them shooty shooty films. Um, I up the ante to guns, boobs, and aliens. Yes. You know, that's if it doesn't have any of those in, you know, like, why, why is it bothering? Um, but yeah, shooty shooty films. Yes. Just not our cup of tea. Or aliens. You can forget all of that. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's when this comes out. So save it for, for an afternoon of that. Or if you're not into the football and the football has to be on. Yeah, it's, it's what we do, isn't it? We yeah. find a time when, you know, we've got a quiet moment or the light's not so good. Because, I mean, with this, you're sewing through a point in a pattern. So yeah. you don't need perfect lighting. So an evening job, if you like. Um, so you've got then, you've got eight layers of the same part of your fabric so what will happen is and we can take the thread out then and it should just pull out or you take your own picker but then this is what gives the kaleidoscope effect oh that's so clever now you can see what i've done here this is because i've done two separate lots and the fabrics moved uh, and this so is what I, I can't, this is why you end up with it being slightly off. Not the end of the world, but I can't tell you enough. And I'll keep saying it and you'll be bored of me saying it. Make sure you've got it, you know, you layer it up properly. So that you've got no movement in your fabric. Because otherwise, that's what happens. 
and that one when you bring it in makes your circle off it still looks pretty pretty gorgeous to me so that's why you need to take your time with this layering so once you've done that you're going to then cut your background fabric you need seven inch squares and you need eight seven inch squares and then you need um, some strips at six and a half by two and a quarter these are all in the instructions all so in the instructions don't panic if don't you're going whoa, whoa, whoa. donna says i've just described her husband's perfect viewing uh Gemma <laughs> says that she's lucky because guys taste in films are similar to hers you see lucky or does it just mean that you know it's a great excuse to get stuff done yeah so your squares your seven inch squares you're going to cut those into quarters through the diagonal to create four quarter square triangles. Now Claire said it would take longer, but would it be more accurate if you cut each layer individually? I don't think so. No, because, because you, you won't know that you've got exactly the same part of your so fabric. It's, it's, it's that sewing through that exact that point same in, point yeah, in your that's pattern. Keeping it all together. Keep it together, yeah. There you go. There's all sorts of, you, you, I can see where Claire's coming from and you do, you think this, is there any easier way of doing this? Is there a quicker <coughs> way? Can I make it quicker? Because I want to get on and make the block. No, there isn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, Claire, I'm sure there are going to be some of those kids TV shows that you have to sit and watch. Bring it out then. So your, let's bring this back down. The triangles that you have made, four of the triangles will go against... Oh, we should say Jane's demoing in a slightly different background colour. We were going to put... Oh, um, yes, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I got all excited because we've had this panel a while. And because I work in the warehouse doing the cutting, predominantly when I'm not doing designing and stuff, I've got access to all this fabric. You get over and I went, Whew, the blush looks really nice with this one. It picks up the pink. That's great. If you can and get normally, the <laughs> it is, but blush has been out of stock now. So. Yeah, it's one of these things. We're having problems, aren't we, at the moment with the shipping of fabric and things. Now, I've put the triangles against those ones mm. and I've got the strips here. Now, you're going to look at that strip and you're going to say, hang on a minute. That's hang too on, long. Cotton picking second, what's going on? But you d you've got to remember you've got the diagonal going across there. Right. Because we're going to make these into quarters. And then we're going to join the quarters together to make halves and then we join the halves together. So the actual making of the block, once you've done all this cutting, is quite quick. So that's how it goes together. So we'll get on and we'll do some <laughs> sewing. I'm just giggling because, Myra, you are so right. She's like, trust Jane. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> and we've all tried to throw different ways of doing it at you. And you're like, no, nope, I know. You're I know I'm sorry. Steadfast I'm going to be... This is the one time I'm going to get really bossy with you. Oh, do. <laughs> Don't do it very often, but when I do, I get very bossy. I've been accused of being bossy. I am. Bothered. <laughs> it's me. Um, I can't stress enough. The preparation is the key on this. That's all I'm going to... I'm not going to... bossy? Argue that point. Several people. Do they? Several people. People I've worked with. Well... People that live with me and I'm married to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they count. <laughs> Elizabeth's loving the demo. She's banned her, John, from watching football. She said she grew up with too many brothers. Enough, Enough's enough on the football front. I quite enjoy the football, actually. Do so, you? Yeah. It's, um, I didn't have a dad that was into football. And when I met Glenn, he took me... <laughs> perfect date. His chat-up line was, do you like football? I was like, like it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's no comeback now then. Yeah, that, that's but he took me way. to a live game. And I was just like, oh, I love this. I love the atmosphere. I love the excitement, the feel of being with all these people that felt the same way about something as you do. It's like going to a quilt show now, yeah. I know. You know, you're surrounded by enthusiastic people who love what you love, do you know? And it's just you can't beat a live football match. The only football match I've ever been to live. I don't know if I've ever told this story on air ever. 
I used to run an athlete management company um, when I was training for the Olympics. Uh, just, you know, just I, I used to teach a few days and run the management company a few days, and it was I was building it up to take over from the teaching, and then yeah. I ended up uh, well, one thing or another happened, and anyway, but one of my um, I was um, Tom Daly's first agent. Wow, I don't think I've ever told this story. No. And I signed him to Adidas. That was me. I got him his very first contract with Adidas. And Adidas, as part of their sort of luring of Tom Daly, found out which football team he liked and took him to their box at the football. I think it was Chelsea. Oh, wow. And we were wined and dined on lobster and champagne. <laughs> I didn't see any of the football. No. I was quite drunk by the end. Brilliant. So quite frankly, if football does not happen like that... <laughs> you don't want to know about it. It ain't happening. It's <laughs> got brilliant. standards. Standards. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's ruined me for football. I mean, the first game that he took me to was when we were still able to stand. And the first time they scored... I literally got lifted off my yeah. feet and surged <laughs> forward with the crowd. Amazing. It was wow. an amazing feeling. I can't... It's one of those times in your life that you never forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since then, I love it. Oh. And Glenn is, like, really good because if I didn't understand stuff, I would be like, why is he doing that? What does that mean? And he would take the time and explain it, mm. which adds to the love yeah. of the game then because when you start to understand why they do what they do and when they do it... Yeah, I have no idea. It makes it, makes it so nice. No idea. So I'm sewing the two triangles together along the short edge there to make a half square triangle because ultimately it's two half square triangles that make a square. Mm. So we'll just do that. Do you chain piece these? Yeah, chain piece it. Um, if you keep everything in your stacks, you can do that because you'll know that you've got the same ones and you'll know... Once you've got them stacked up and then you can stack them in their panels and you can then make sure you've got the right triangle with the right bit. Now, when you do it um, with a fabric that hasn't got the circle on, yeah. you'll have your triangles all going the same way. Yeah. But with this pattern, you'll get some triangles going the opposite circle, yes. opposite direction. Yes. Um, if I did this the opposite way, it doesn't look at all... You don't really get anything. Oh, okay. If I do that with this to make the triangle, if I wanted to make, because half of them would go, if you wanted them to go all the same way. It's interesting, but, but you don't get that kaleidoscope same. effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really look like anything. Now, you see, Sarah Payne says, just believe in the needle. Listen to Auntie Jane. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Thank you know, you, Sarah. coming from award-winning <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, author. Thank you, <laughs> See if Sarah says it, it's true. <laughs> I mean, she's written a whole book yeah. on quilting, um, which I believe is on our website. So if you did want to, you can play with that. That's quite an interesting design, isn't it? You know, it's another design option. It doesn't get the effect that I wanted. No. I'm bossy. I wanted it like that. <laughs> it's your quilt. Do it as you like. <laughs> Yeah, and repent at leisure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Diane said the first match she took her son to, age seven, was Watford v Millwall. Two players stretched it off, red cards, headbutts, police ch ch uh, chase the fans over the roof. Oh my goodness. Well, this same match that I went to, I mean, it's a, like a, I was nervous. It was, a, it was Manchester United versus Spurs. Spurs had just won the FA Cup, so they, got, they were towing their trophy off. Yeah. Manchester United have got a huge ground with a big fan base. There were loads of people. I don't think I've ever... Because I'd never been to, like, an open-air concert or anything like that. Yeah. So I'd never seen this amount of people. There were mounted policemen. Yeah. And I was... Which is intimidating. adored if the horses. And yeah. the policemen are lovely. And they let you straight the horse and chat to them and everything. But there was a little bit of a scuffle at the entrance. Yeah. So the mounted policeman put his horse in front of the entrance. Yeah. And we had to walk underneath the horse Did to you? get in. And that was an experience as well. And I was yeah. just like, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm easily pleased. he would let you do that anymore. No, they probably I mean, I wouldn't. I on an 18-hand ex-police horse, and they are 
Jeez. They're beautiful horses they and they're gorgeous. so calm. Just... Um, Sarah loved the curtsy. It's not <laughs> every day you get curtsy to on air, is it, Sarah? Mm. Uh, Heidi's got a lot of love for Sarah. It's, um, uh, yeah. It's... And um, yeah, I told everyone, didn't I, that Sarah Payne is one of our um, takeover day guests. I don't think you mentioned that. Did I not mention it? No. Surely I, I must Do you know, have. I'm getting a bit paranoid about this because this happens to be on a Friday when I'm not in the studio. <laughs> like, oh. I'm going to be like, can I work on Fridays or the last day yeah. of the month? <laughs> <laughs> so when you add the rectangle on, line it up with the corner of the triangle mm. because you want it to come down past Am I in the right place here? No, well, no, because actually I've just realised that if I go up on a close-up, you're just going to have a look at me, my lovely musical tin. Oh, right. um, And not see all of that. Move it out of the way. Is I do love my musical tin. It's beautiful. Does that make it any easier? Oh, no, see, Diane needed a quilted, here. insulated cushion for the football, always freezing. Was it you that did the studio, um, the uh, stadium seats? I thought that I'd credited that to Jan, but maybe it was you, Diane. I can't remember. So we're going to sew that because we want it on a continuous line. Again, because we're making a square ultimately. Okay. So we're lining that up with there. And we're going to sew down. Now, I suggest, and it's just a suggestion, that you sew on the fabric, on the, on the long bit of the um, plain fabric, and then onto your triangle. Well, you see, because John has now supersized his because he's bought a gazillion kits, <laughs> uh, he thought that he might do the cornerstones, flipping them the other way around. Yeah. I mean, that's going to look stunning. Yeah. We need pictures, That would John, be lovely. That, please. That would definitely be lovely. Susan quite likes them flip round. Yeah. And uh, Gemma and Ali are um, just commiserating with each other because their other halves are F1 fans. Yeah, my cousin's husband is an F1 fan and nobody is allowed to do anything or touch the television on, <laughs> on a race day. Uh, John says, please, can you be in on the 29th of January? It is a Friday, John. You're going to uh, have to have words. I'll have to talk to my boss. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Lowe's calling you a witch again. Oh, do you? Uh, no, in a good way, a magic quilting witch, but still, you know, still a, a witch. Maybe so, you need to make her a little witch's hat pendant, Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> I've sewn across that piece of fabric. Now, I'm putting that on the top. Now, I find that if I do this, when I, when I push it back against the fabric, that line of stitching helps me keep it straight. It's gone off a little bit there, she says doing that but it sort of helps it line up better for some reason it's just something that I found as I've been working oh Gemma would prefer you to be known as the sorceress of sewing oh I like that one Gemma. <laughs> it's all good she's good with her words is our Gemma she is so you've got two pieces like that now so now you can see that they pretty much line up. So when we join those together, it's going to make the square. So we put yeah. them right sides together. Now, because I wanted to keep this circle, I didn't pretty, I used that as my focal point of what I, I wanted to line up. So I pinned those bits together. Okay. Just because I really wanted to try and keep the circle as much as possible. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're new to this technique, and you're feeling a bit worried about it, you'll see that they don't line up. I did quite a lot of manipulation. Some of them went boom, straight together, perfect. Some of them I have to manip manipulate. And what I'll do when I've finished, if it's okay with you, I'll take it off and I'll show the bits where they don't match yeah, 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 and I've had course. to move it. I mean, from here, it all looks stunning. So, I, you yeah. know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see any of that. So I flipped that over now and I'm going to sew the quarter of an inch down there. And I flipped it over just so that I can see that triangle so that I can sew against the edge of that because I mean you can go down there but you're not going to be absolutely certain you've caught the triangle in properly on that side. John says we should stack and whack you a hat. <laughs> <laughs> or just whack me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a ring. See what you did there. Uh, now Gemma I have to ask you who was your English teacher at school because I had Mrs Leaf 
And I don't remember her being such a lover of the alliteration. Oh, oh, hang on. In Sarah's, in the Payne household, uh, no one is allowed to speak during Doctor Who sports, however, don't get a look in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forget you were a big Doctor Who fan. I love Doctor Who. Husband's not so do keen. You? Yeah. Husband's not so keen. He doesn't really do make believe. Oh, uh, okay. He doesn't. He doesn't get things like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and stuff like that. Whereas I love that sort of thing. Yeah, no, that's fine. Doctor Who used to scare me as a child, so I haven't really watched it since. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. It. I used to hide I behind. I think it's scarier the... now than it really? used to be when we were children. Oh, well, there's no hope for me then, is yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, there's I some. I used to hide behind the sofa with a cushion then. There's some episodes, and I'm like, oh my god. Mm. The statues one, the angels, was just like... <laughs> oh no, I have no idea. Um, Joanna says that her husband and son are both F1 fans. So as well as race day, they watch the qualifying and the practice, so it's all weekend. That's my dad, that's my dad. In fact, when I got my GCSE results, I tell you what, this is back in the day where A-stars were only just invented, so they, they were mean about how many they gave out. Yeah. Um, and I'm I, just going to trim now that. Then. Oh, that comes on. Rectangle a bit off. Okay. Just because it makes it easier to um, come together. So for my GCSEs, I got what? Three A stars, six A's, and a B. And my dad's first comment was, Oh, you let yourself down with the B, didn't you? And, and, then, and then he booked for us to go to watch the Grand Prix at Spa <laughs> as, as a, a treat. As a present for, me. for you. <laughs> Yeah, how's that work then, yeah. Dad? It was a very long coach trip there. <laughs> and um, an interesting moment when the hotel that we went out uh, from the hotel to go and get a bite to eat and realised that we were right slap bang in the red light district. <laughs> Slightly awkward moment with your yeah, dad. With your dad. <laughs> you know? So it was fun. It was fun. Um, it's the only time my dad and I have ever gone on holiday together. Now you can see there... That that's not going to go together. Oh, Jane. And that's because, of, you know, I didn't put as many pieces in. It would, if it was done properly, it would line up. But I'm just going to do it together. So you get your two pieces and you'd line them up. No. Now, I'm just going to put them, because I pressed my um, tr squares, triangles, to the triangular side... Mm. When I put them together, they will lock in. Oh, nice. So that helps, you know, get them together and get nice points in the middle. Um. Oh, no, you see, here we go. Tales from school. Gemma said it was Mrs. Uh, Whitley. Her handbag was always open on her desk with a pack of B&H on show. <laughs> she was strict but fabulous. Everyone was terrified of her. Yeah. We all had a teacher like that, didn't we? Ours yeah. was Mrs. This is Osborne, I think. She was a geography teacher. Brilliant teacher, but scary. Really scary, you know. You'd be like... But you, all ha you always have that one, don't you? Yeah. I was known, when I used to teach, I was known as Zero Tolerance Tash because I wouldn't take any rubbish. Um, but as soon as you have the control of the classroom, you can bring humour in. Yes. But you can't do it when they're all messing around. It so just doesn't work. You'll end up with... And hopefully, and I can see that it's not done it on this one either. So they're going to, it's going to match. So in theory, you've got an arc going on if you've yes. done it the way I've done it. Yes. Um, and then you've got two halves and you'll put the two halves together. And if you press the seams to the same direction again, when you put them together, it's going to lock in. I'm going to turn that over. It'll lock in and that will help with that points in the middle. And again, if you want to, you can just pin that just to make sure that your point's in the middle. And this is another way, if, <coughs> if they don't quite match up, you can see on this one that block is a bit lower than the other. So I've put the point through where, the, where all the triangles meet there, and I'm going to put it up against the one on the opposite side, just to hold that in the, in the right place. Uh -huh. And then hopefully when I put them together, it will line up. And again, you can, you can line up 
the borders of the plate yeah. if you want to. You, you know, I'm quite well known for the fact that I don't pin very much, but with this one, I would pin as much as you can. Easy. You're working with biased edges. Sometimes you it's have to. It's going to move. Don't you? Yeah. My quilt yesterday. Had you was, to I'm going to say you were saying this yesterday yeah. when you were adding your borders on. As it gets bigger, you know, it is easier to to pin as much as you can. Keep yeah. things in place. Um, we've managed to confuse poor Rachel. Rachel, um, yes, it should have been block of the month today. But here's the thing: when I took everything to the post office, firstly we tried to post all of the blocks of the months out before Christmas, and the post office refused to take them, saying that they were already full and they couldn't take any more, and they were having no more collections before Christmas. Then after Christmas, when I took them in, um, they said to me, "We have no more collections until Monday." Well. I was then terrified that they wouldn't go and they wouldn't have them in time. So the executive decision was made that we would postpone block of the month until next week to ensure that everybody had their block of the month for those of you that wish to sew along with Jane. So hence the switch was made um, and she also would like to know about the takeover days. So I am... Um, Cutting back my hours at Hochanda because um, it's a long way to go. I'm needed here more, blah, blah, lots of reasons. Um, I'm still going to do shows over there because they're a great bunch of people and I adore them. Uh, but I'm needed here a, a bit more. So um, I will be here. I will be there half as much, which meant that, you know, we've got an extra day a month that we could uh, pop in a show. So the last Friday of every month will be a designer takeover day. So this month is the very fabulous John Cole Morgan. He is going to come and do his thing. Um, and he will then go on to have a regular slot of his choosing after that. And um, then we will have a different designer come and bring on whatever they wish for that last Friday of the month. And the show can go for as long or as short a time as they want. It's their day, it's up to them. And that is the idea, so that you get to work with new designers, um, we get to have a play, bit of banter, cup of tea, um, all good. So John kicks off in January, Joe Carter does February, so that we've got some gorgeous Easter makes ready for you. Um, and then, um, I've still got to check that it's okay for me to say who who March is. And then April is fabulous Sarah Payne. How exciting. Um, and it's, it will have been then. Sarah, Sarah, it's been a good year, won't it, since you were last on? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So that brings you up to speed. So Happy you Christmas. can see that the block itself, once you've done all that preparation, is quite a quick block to make. Um, you've got the... That's not right, obviously, because I didn't take my time layering up the fabric, but you can see how it would work to remake that circular bit. And then you've got this kaleidoscope effect in the middle. Yeah. And you get a different effect with each each eighth that you've made Beautiful. because it makes a different kaleidoscope. Um, but it is quite quick to go together. What I will say is that occasionally, and it happened to me a couple of times on this one, and I will show you in a minute, it didn't quite come together in the middle. Oh, okay. So I just jigged it. So what I'm saying is this probably isn't the best quilt to do for your very first quilt. Okay. Unless you really love it, in which case you'll take the time Yeah, to you'll do take it. the time and you can play with it. But there is a little bit of love sort of like manoeuvring it and yeah. maybe sewing a seam that goes like that. Um, John says, do you use um, Best Press? Yes, 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 yes to Best Press. Um, it's not best the Best Press, press buckle. To, de to death, really, because yeah. you don't, as little movement as possible, and also the Best Press will help hold the layers together as mm. well. Would you like to show everybody our Best Press um, sprays that we've got? So we've we've not got the little ones anymore. That I mean, the the sprayer, because that's, yeah. that's probably what's confusing. It's not in a Best Press bottle. Yes, it's inside there. These give a, a lovely even spray we, no the white ones i've used for mauds yeah i just um, wouldn't because i know it's in here sometimes just to show what they look like yeah no she's been having some grooming sessions with her hypoallergenic perfect pooch spray so it's it's also great for dogs so we've only got the little one but it gives a it really gives fine you mist rather a than really a really fine <laughs> mist you can see that these are great but the the 
it's a bit more concentrated and can be a bit more heavy, a heavier spray on it. So this, and I found with this one when I do it, because I do like half meter bigger pieces, you can really like <laughs> with can. it, it's lovely. If you if you were doing some sort of painting with aerosols, you'd get a lovely fine. Oh, mist. you would. It would it's be lovely. Perfect. Yeah, um, but don't do that with that. No. Yeah, it does, and in it, it seems to make it go further because it's a finer mist. I think you get more out of your product, which when you're selling stuff probably isn't the best thing to say, but <laughs> it goes further. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's the thing, isn't it? You know why spend money when we don't need to? Because no, we can buy more you fabric can spend with it. it with more fabric, yeah, definitely. Um, Heidi said that her English teacher, Mrs. Um, Princelow, would bring her dog to school, the ugliest dog alive, and it um, it was called Little One Aww. and hated boys. <laughs> that's not ideal, is it? No. You see, fabulous Arthur Studio Dog. He used to come to school with me. I was just a teacher, an autistic in an autistic unit on, yeah. on, and on Wednesdays he used to come to school with me and we because Wednesdays was park day and we'd always sing Disney songs all the way down to the park on an afternoon and they would throw balls for Arthur to teach them turn taking oh, um, back in the days when you could do that sort of thing yeah now I haven't cut because I didn't have enough of that fab oh did. Did, I, did, I, did I did yes I did so when you come to join the blocks together you're going to need a big square, and I can't, can't think of the measurement, but I've got a board in front of me I can measure it on. It's an 18-inch square that we cut into half. And that makes the inset triangle that goes between the blocks. So you'll right. join, you'll have one square. I'm just wondering whether I've, I've... It's in the pattern, I'm not talking very well here. It might be that. <laughs> it might Words, be that it's a Jane. They're it very works. tricky things. It might be that it's a quarter square from the eighteen that fits into there. So you'll have one of your squares that you'll add a triangle onto there, and a triangle onto there, and then you have a half square triangle mm. that goes on there. So you add the two triangles Gee, there. It looks like a witch's hat. Maybe. Yes, <laughs> wear it. A sorceress. So add your two quarter square triangles onto that side yeah and then you had add your half square triangle onto the top okay. and you'll do two like that okay and then you'll do three blocks together in a row and on one of them you'll have a quarter square triangle going that way yeah. and on the other row you'll have the quarter square triangle going that way on the end yeah and then when you join them together it makes a rectangle ba -ba! just like that uh, Geraldine, Natasha says, when you, uh, can you ask Jennifer Taylor tomorrow if she could uh, come on, please? Geraldine, I'm ahead of you. I'm already ahead of you. Already ahead of you. I love Jenny Bob Taylor. She's we lovely. Do, we do, we do. So, yeah, it's quite a straightforward quilt to put together. The blocks go together well when you take your time and do all that layering up. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to take this down without trying to dismantle the set completely. I did have issues with it and again I think it's probably because I was rushing it and didn't put as many points in as I could have done. Um, I'm going to struggle now to find the one that's really off. You see but there's the thing, say this that again it. Jane. I'm going to struggle now to find the bit that was really off. And when you made it did you think that was all anyone was going to be able to see? You do worry yeah. but then when you put it in you're like oh that's it looks reason. okay from a distance. We've all said this, haven't we? Three foot distance. So when it comes together, you get beautiful ones like that. If I can show that up close. Can we go close up on oh, that Oh, sorry. One? So you can see it's a real kaleidoscope effect. When oh, that's quilted, beautiful. When I quilted it, I quilted just inside the circle there yeah. and outside the circle there and then around the shape it's like yes. a star, spinning star shape, isn't it? Yeah. And I went through the blocks. That's all the quilting I did on this. I copied the shape that the stars make in the corners there, just square um, yeah. shapes. That's all I did on that. But it's this one here that you can see. There's actually two of them. It doesn't come together in the middle. Can you see that? It's off. What? 
you, that's that's the middle of that half and that's the middle of that half there oh, or there and there so that's the seam that goes runs across okay, right so worst case is if it's off in the middle stick a button on it well make a feature it goes flat which is good and i was more interested in keeping the circular shape yeah so all i'm saying to you is you know don't worry about it too much you've been looking at it on the wall for quite a few weeks now yeah hands up how many of you and i don't think anybody said well, they might have been they're just too polite to say <laughs> that's off in the middle <laughs> but yeah <laughs> it no. makes a lovely size throw if you wanted to get two quilts you'd make a single bed quilt wouldn't you by joining it I mean, if you're Carl Morgan and you just bought four, then... Yeah, uh, that's a know, double bed, isn't it? That's a double bed. Yeah. It's a nice technique. And like I say, if you've got a large print fabric that you've bought because you love the colours, but you're not really sure how you do it. And if you're a patchworker like me, where you use small pieces, mm. sometimes a big print, you can't envision it cutting it up into small pieces. But this technique lets you use that large print, but create, create something else. Oh, I tell you what, I've got some Anna Maria Horner's big prints that would be amazing. They would create for this. something, and it's it's lovely because you look at a fabric and you love it, but then you do kaleidoscope with it, and it creates something completely different. And you're like, oh my god, I love this even more. And sometimes we're drawn to fabric because of the colours, yeah, not necessarily the pattern on the fabric. And so if you love the colours in that fabric, you're going to love it even more because it'll create a secondary pattern. It's a really lovely way of using up fabric. And if, if you have got a panel that's got eight repeats, another nice way. You may, you may have bought one of those cushion pad panels a long time ago and, and have had it and thought, oh, I don't, it's not really in fashion now. I don't really like it. But if you've got eight of them and you stack them up, you'll create something completely different. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I'm now wondering whether I should crack open that Anna Maria Corner bolt and let people have as much of that as they want. Mm. Yeah. Shall I go and get it and show we'll you? We'll see what the fabric repeat is, because sometimes if it's a big repeat, you're going to waste a lot of fabric, particularly because you are, with a, a pattern repeat, you are only cutting five inch squares out of it. Now, John, I suppose you could make bigger squares yeah. and scale it up. John said that he had... Um, he had a lady do a stack and whack in one of his classes and she used the cave cabbages and he said, oh my word, one word, divine, I can imagine. Yes, I We've can still imagine got a little be. bit of that by the half metre, but I'll show, hang on, if you bear with me one second and my mic might crackle a little bit when I go... Um, just pop this back up here without when I just pulling pop into the, the warehouse. Off. But, you know, do you know the one I'm thinking of, Jane? I think I do. Do you? Hang on. Bear with all. Bear with. Bear with. Back in a second. That's bear with. Oh, it is. That's good. There we go. Sorry. Rear view of me. Even worse than the front row. Yeah, so I think the main part of this pattern is the fabric preparation. Taking your time with sewing through as many pattern repeat points as you can. There you go. We'll make it go together better. Okay, oh, that one. wow. Do you look see why this. I thought of it? Yes. Let's have a look at the pattern repeat and see where it Jane, goes. tell us, tell us, tell us. It is stunning. Look at the colours in this. I know, I know, I know. But it could be... Can we go close up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be one of those things that you look at and go, it's quite a big pattern, what do I do with it? Yes. So how much would they need for this? Let's have a look because it's got quite a narrow pattern repeat, so that's quite good. The pattern repeat is from there to there, which is about 12 inches, maybe. Right. So off the camera, I know that. So let's have a look. We'll measure this. The pattern repeat on this is, yeah, 12 inches, going from that point to there. On. Well, so 12 could, and a half. So, so you could do a six inch square? Yeah. If you... If you went, if you bought a meter of this fabric, you'd easily be able to do that. Um, are we going to? We're going to need a lighter background, aren't we, for this one? Yeah, I think maybe this lovely sort of like tealy blue with the sky blue. Is it sky blue that we've got that would go? Sk uh, no, sky blue is a, a lighter one. It's baby I think it's blue. 
baby blue or pale baby, blue. Baby blue. So the pale blue. So powder blue, maybe. Huh? Powder, powder blue. blue, maybe. Mm. Yeah. We'll have a look at it. So, excuse if me. If anybody would like this, shall we put it up with two meters of the blue and a meter of that? Yeah. So that would come. To, oh God, I've got to do maths. Hang on. Bear with me, caller. You could pick out this zingy red as well if you, you know, it's like a corally colour in here. It's quite nice. That might look, that might really make it off the page. Uh, that would be. What you would do with this is you would layer up the pattern repeat and you would cut out five inch squares from the same point. You'd have to have. Now, hang on. I just said a meter, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I think because you'll get, if that's 12 inches, let's just measure a metre and see if we can do it. We'll just do it with a pin. That's off. That's a metre there. So you've got the pattern there. You'd need to layer it up. So maybe, because it's cut, cut it in half along that way and then layer it up because you want, you'd want to layer it four times through the bit, maybe a metre and a half to get your eight. So that would make it, bear with me, bear with me, Cola. Just so that you get the eight. 26 for the quilt kit. That's really good. Yeah. For a metre and a half of that. And two metres of a... And two metres of a plane. Yeah. Oh, two metres of a plane. Yeah. Hang on. Bear with and it's one and three quarters. So if we say two and then you've got some for your stash. It's a metre and a half of that plus... I did the binding as well out of the plane, just because I wanted a plane binding. 26.99. I say that's pretty good for a metre and a half, three and a half metres of fabric. Um, is that how we shall do it then? Two metres of a plane with that. One and a half metres of this. I can, yeah. On a special, that is a special price. That's a I'm really good it. price, Natasha. Are you sure you've worked properly? <laughs> Sorry. I am. Um, <laughs> well, I will, um, you know, I'll stand by it. Okay. I'll absolutely stand bargain. by it. Bargain, yeah. bargain, bargain. Yeah. Obviously the instructions, the actual construction of it is the same, but I've said cut a 10 inch square and then cut it up. With this, you can randomly cut five inch squares from different places on the pattern. Right. That's Perfect. the only difference. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to do a 10 inch square and cut it up, you'd get the same effect, but you, would, you might get that which is quite gray. Oh, Jane, if you knock your mic, it's rusty. Sorry, has it gone underneath? Is that better? Yeah. Um, if you, um, you know, you wouldn't want to cut a piece there because that's predominantly grey, so you wouldn't have a very exciting pattern. No. But cutting it on this bit here would give you something really interesting. So, yeah. That is a bit, a bit gorge, isn't it? It's a lovely, and there's some gorgeous colours in here that you could put it against. Right, we'll go and have a look then and pop those together. So if, watch out on the on the website. We'll get Gemma to load that. Yeah, lovely. Um, yeah, that's gorgeous fabric. Yeah, we shall. So we will put that kit together. Um, John says, when is it on the website? Give us, <laughs> give us two minutes, we need to come off air, cut it, photograph it and stick it up. It'll take us about 10, 15 minutes after we stop chatting. Yeah. Um, and then we'll pop it up there. Um, do you know what? You could make all sorts of that amount of fabric, couldn't you? Yeah. You might even have enough left over to put a border of this around. Oh my goodness, yeah. Well, Which you could... would really bring it in there and you would really sort of like have that bordered and it would bring the kaleidoscope pattern in and you would see it done. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, John says, do not tell Andrew. Our lips are sealed. <laughs> Our lips yeah. are sealed. You're on, like, We're like doctors with co pay customer convent, convent, con can't even say it, confidentiality. Absolutely. 
what happens in, in, in the quilt shop, stays in the quilt shop. <laughs> Lo says he knows. He knows already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Jane, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Next week is birthday week. Yay! Yay! Um, so we Which are... is quite good that we're doing block of the month because we started in the block of the month. Oh, do you know what? Yes. I must stop dropping this iPad on the floor. It's done it three times now. Um, yes, I'm very excited for that. Um, will you be making a quilt top up as an example? Um, no, Lorraine, we won't. We're, no, no. We're moving on because to the if next we thing. if we do that, there'll be less fabric for you to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, low, yeah, birthday cake. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, but I tell you what, here's the thing. When you guys make it up, send us photos so that we know yeah. what it looks like. That's the way. That's the way to do That's it. That's the way. Um, guys, thank you so much uh, for entertaining us. Jane, thank you so much for welcome. Um, entertaining and educating us. It stopped snowing now, so I won't panic about getting home. <laughs> I was just like, my mum, I said to my mum, it's snowing here. She said, oh, I hope you're going to get stuck at snowed in. Oh, no, I, like, did. Oh, I did. That think. might finish Natasha off completely if I had to stay here. <laughs> you're very welcome. <laughs> Very welcome. Um, I was just hoping that it meant Captain Scamor could do a full day at school, not going to lie. It's like, I'm not going to call me in early to go pick her up. Um, oh, yes, there we go. Um, <laughs> right, uh, tea and cake, yes. Thank you for another good entertaining morning. Um, lovely idea, says Fiona. Um, thank you both so much for cheering me up on a bleak day, says Ali. It's our absolute pleasure. Becky says, Becky? Becky says another fab morning. Thank you, ladies. Um, excellent. Wonderful. Right. Perfect. We're going to go and cut this up, put it on the website, and see you in a bit. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Jane, give them a wave. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.